no-till farming practices are increasing right across Australia. Rick Llewellyn of the CSIRO discusses the adoption of no-till in South Australia. He talks to us about the benefits and constraints associated with developing no-till systems. Throughout Australia we're at very high levels of no-till adoption and South Australia is up there. It's had probably one of the more recent surges in, in no-till adoption uh, in the last uh, 10 years, whereas some uh, areas of some states, such as in WA, reached that uh, almost a plateau um, several years before. But now we're uh, at that plateau in several regions. But there's a few important factors to consider in South Australia, and that is uh, it's, all, it's not just how many farmers are using some no-till, but the extent of use. Well, the rapid increase is uh, due to the farmers wanting to uh, crop more land more quickly and uh, save fuel, as well as uh, conserve soil and, and the right uh, machinery being available and the right herbicides being available to let them do that. Some of the main drivers is just how much uh, information and, and learnings required to make the system work. There's a lot of different factors, weeds, disease, different, different crops, different machinery types, a whole range of factors that are important. And it's uh, only when all those come together that people are ready to sort of take the step. And uh, one thing we have found is that um, the availability of information and uh, consultants to help farmers take that step have been very important and in not just taking the step, but also sustaining and developing a successful no-till system. The benefits in terms of the environment uh, are obvious, and that's been a, a major sort of platform for farmers wanting to shift to this, this system. Uh, in terms of other, other drivers and, or other benefits, um, there really is the opportunity to crop more intensively and r respond to the potential profitability of uh, more intensive cropping, cropping compared to older, more traditional uh, farming systems. And, and no-tills let people crop more intensively, crop more often, uh, whilst also building up soil. Our studies have shown uh, a number of interesting things, as well as the general increase, and, and now you've got several regions reaching a, a plateau in terms of uh, the number of farmers using no-till, and generally in Australia that's very high. Often it reaches a plateau up around 90%, where we're standing here in the Mallee, it looks like it's starting to plateau at around uh, 70 to 80%. Um, but you still see a lot of flexibility, and that's a real important trait for the way that Australian farmers have used no-till. They're not sticking strictly to just using no-till. You're seeing a lot of farmers uh, use cultivation where necessary. So in certain seasons, you, you do see it um, go up and down. And, and an example is when glyphosate uh, herbicide prices um, peaked or really spiked um, several years ago. And what you, what you saw then is a, is a shift back to cultivation for farmers in, in some regions. Uh, not all regions, but um, in regions like, like this one here, where farmers are still very flexible in their use of no-till, they're able to move backwards and forwards uh, as, the, as the need demands. There is a, a number of uh, opportunities, I think, for, to allow farmers to use more no-till than what they're currently doing. And of course, that, that, the aim there is, to, is for farmers who want to be using more no-till um, and to help them reach that aim. And we're not saying that no-till is uh, essential for everyone on all land by any stretch, but there are a lot of farmers out there who want to be using more than what they're doing. And the constraints are, are still you know, common factors like disease. So I'm concerned about management of disease under, under constant no-till systems. And also the, the feedback back from farmers is um, also weed issues too, still being a, a constraint. The main risks, I guess, in terms of these no-till systems is, is just relaxing and thinking that the job's done and we've reached this very high level of adoption. But it's a system that needs a, a lot of constant work to sustain in terms of the things I mentioned, such as disease and, and weed management and a range of other uh, factors. The important thing is, that, is to recognise there's still a lot of work to be done to sustain this system um, in a way that gives farmers the benefits that they want from it over uh, the long term.